Shantae and the Seven Sirens is a 2D action adventure game from Way Forward and the latest entry in the fan favorite Shantae series, which has been around since 2002. What exactly is the Shantae series? Let's find out! Here is a quick guide to everything you need to know before playing this game. We'll be taking a look at the world and characters, a bit of the series history, as well as every publicly available known detail about Seven Sirens, without spoiling any of the plot twists and surprises that the game will offer. Welcome to the Sequinland Crash Course 101. Way Forward is known for making beautiful 2D games, starring cute yet strong, interesting female protagonists. And the Shantae games certainly embody everything about that image. A quick look at the eponymous heroine herself lets you know that these games are not following the usual trends. Shantae is a feisty, sassy half genie, sporting bold colors. Her genie powers allow her to use magic that transform her into different fantastical creatures. How? By belly dancing, of course. These transformation powers give her the ability to climb walls, swim underwater, break through objects, fly in the air, etc. Meanwhile, her long silky purple hair isn't there just for show. She actually uses it as a whip to fight enemies with. Now, games with female protagonists are already kind of unusual. But how many of them have you seen where the protagonist is visibly taking Middle Eastern influences? And just how many games out there star a belly dancer? Just by herself, Shantae already makes her games stand out quite a bit. But the charm of the series also extends to the supporting cast of characters and the world that they inhabit. Shantae's adventures are set in Sequinland a fictional magical world filled with mythical spirits, crazy humans, and deadly monsters. Is that it, you might say? Nope. It also has pirates, ninjas, robots, zombies, medieval knights, the symbiotes from Spider-Man, and just about anything cool that's out there, not shying away from referencing lots of classic games and TV animations. In fact, much like modern indie titles, Shantae games take a lot of elements from Japanese gaming classics, blending them together and modernizing them to create something fresh and more accessible to the sensibilities of modern gamers. Behind it all is the writing and creativity of series chief mastermind Matt Boson, who gives the series a lot of wit and playfulness. The general plot of the Shantae series is that, in the past, guardian genies fought to defend Sequinlan against the forces of evil. The genies eventually settled down with humans and gave birth to half-genie daughters. However, the genies were eventually forced to depart from Sequinland, severing all contact with the human race and leaving their daughters behind. These half-genie daughters would grow up to take up their mantle becoming the new defenders of Sequinland. Shantae is one such half-genie, although her origins are quite mysterious. Her mother was apparently a pretty important figure in the fight against evil, while her father... might or might not be Karnov from a completely unrelated game series. Either way, she grew up without knowing either one of them, and was instead raised by an old friend of the family. Chante acts as the guardian genie of Scuttletown, a small fisherman village that, somehow, seems to be a magnet for trouble. She often finds herself facing off against Risky Boots, 
a nefarious pirate who aims to rule Sequinland in the genie's absence. These adventures usually follow the Zelda formula, forcing Shantae to search the land for special items, usually located inside of dungeons that she must overcome. The history behind the Shantae series is an interesting one. On the one hand, we have a heck of a success story for our industry. A quick online search will reveal many games, collectibles, and an overall increasing recognition for the character, each entry being more popular than the last. Yet, Shantae was very close to never making it this far. The series had to overcome quite a few hurdles to get where it is today. The hip-shaking heroine was designed during the Super Nintendo era in 1994 by Matt Boson's wife, Erin Boson, who was his fiance at the time. The original concept for the character was that of a hair-whipping genie who could belly dance to summon magic. For many years, they would try to pitch the game to various publishers, but it kept getting rejected. The reason? It was thought that male gamers would never want to play as a female main character. It was also a new IP, which is always quite risky. When the game became a Game Boy project, it was also quite big, requiring an expensive card to be produced. All of this kept publishers from wanting to take the plunge and invest in the Shantae project. This changed with Capcom, who eventually gave it a chance. The original Shantae was released in 2002 for the Game Boy Color, many months after it was actually completed. It's often praised for being a technical showcase for the portable device. It was given critical acclaim by reviewers upon release and is often well regarded when looked at retrospectively. Sadly, it was a product of unfortunate timing, as it was released a year after the Game Boy Advance pretty much replaced the Game Boy Color on the market. Shantae was largely unnoticed by gamers and few copies were produced. Now, many series in the gaming industry have seen an end to their short lifespans for very similar reasons. But Matt Boson and the team at WayForward kept busy for the next few years, constantly trying to make a sequel happen on the side while they worked on licensed games. Various concepts and tech demos came out of this, including ones on the PlayStation and the GameCube. One of the more popular prototypes is that of Shantae 2, Risky's Revolution for the Game Boy Advance. Despite showing a lot of promise and getting quite a bit of attention online, the prototype was unsuccessful in gaining a publisher, never making it to the market. The release of the Nintendo DSi in 2008 kind of changed everything, as it allowed developers to deliver games directly to the players, without the need of a publisher. Suddenly, a new door opened for the series, and no time was wasted. In November of 2009, a trilogy of Shantae games were announced for the device. The Nintendo DSi was short-lived, however, so the team was forced to scrap the trilogy idea, with only the first part being finalized. In October 4th of 2010, over 8 years after the release of the original Game Boy Color game, Shantae finally had a sequel. Shantae's Risky's Revenge is the biggest and most impressive game released on the DSi's digital download service, with fantastic, colorful and detailed pixel art. The team addressed all of the complaints that players had with the first game, taking particular care to steer away from what they refer to as bad retro doing away with any confusing or frustrating gameplay elements while enhancing the parts that fans considered fun. It made use of a lot of art assets created for the scrapped Game Boy Advance prototype, and it also reused the background to foreground jump engine from the way forward developed Nintendo DS game where the wild things are. This was truly the turning point for the series, as it finally got the attention it deserved, both as a critical success and as a popular game that made many fans for the franchise. Now, on the negative side of things, 
Risky's revenge ended up being a bit on the short side, and its origins as part of the Castle trilogy can be felt in its cliffhanger ending. Scuttletown was sold off to one of the antagonists, and Shantae lost all of her magical powers, making fans wonder where the series could possibly go next. Well, they would have to wait four years to find out. Time would eventually reveal that the wait was more than worth it, with the next entry, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Everything about Shantae was turned up to 11 with this game. Released as a full-size game on the 3DS, Pirate's Curse did not face all of the restrictions that the previous two titles placed upon the team. The game size became bigger, the sound quality improved, the amount of music tracks increased as well. The length of the game provided many more opportunities for the lore and story to be expanded. In fact, every character would now get their own story arcs and play an interesting role in the overall plot. Some of the characters actually got quite a bit of exposure and unforgettable moments. Risky Boots actually teams up with Shantae in this one, giving the story a bit of a new angle. As mentioned earlier, the previous game ended with Shantae losing her genie powers. This gave the team the freedom to come up with a new, more immediate traversal system in the form of the Pirate Gear skills. Abilities would now be performed instantly with simple button presses. Shantae could now dash at high speeds to cut through enemies, perform multiple jumps by blasting off of cannons, glide through the air to reach faraway platforms and even shoot with a pistol. Unlike transformations, these skills could be combined for some really cool ways of traversing layouts. The game also reused some of the tech that WayForward created for the 3DS game Adventure Time Hey Ice King, Why'd You Steal Our Garbage, a 2D action RPG in the vein of Zelda 2. This can be seen in the inventory system and upgrade mechanics. Overall, an excellent game and one of the very best Metroidvania experiences in the market. Before Pirate's Curse's release, another significant thing was happening in the game industry. Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding was kind of a big deal. Up to this point, Shantae games were designed for portable gaming devices, and they relied on reusing assets and existing tech. A crowdfunded Shantae game, however, would let the team work from scratch and aim for big HD screens and consoles. In October of 2013, the Kickstarter campaign was successfully funded. The resulting game, Shantae Half Genie Hero, released on PC and all major consoles in September of 2016. Half Genie Hero is very different to the rest of the Shantae series. While previous games were made up of interconnected worlds, Half Genie Hero is a linear stage-based adventure, with no dungeons to discover. It's similar to the Mega Man X games in that you can revisit previous stages to find collectible objects and access new areas with recently obtained skills. But by this point, the Shantae series was usually recognized as a metroidvania, so this change was met with some fan criticism, despite overall being very successful and receiving positive reviews. The pirate gear system was abandoned in favor of Shantae's dance transformations, now giving her many more forms. Story-wise, the game also served as a soft reboot for the franchise, with the focus going back to Risky Boots being Shantae's main antagonist. The soft reboot nature of the title, high definition graphics and its presence on just about any modern console makes this the most accessible title in the series and a pretty good starting point for newcomers. It also has the most content of any of the Shantae games with multiple campaigns and playable characters.
That said, the next Shantae project, Seven Sirens, was made with all fans of the series in mind. Shantae and the Seven Sirens is the latest game in the series. It promises to be a return to form. We'll be seeing the return of big interconnected Metroid-like worlds, full of secrets and exploratory puzzles. While the game came out first on Apple Arcade, it was actually designed as a console game from the ground up. After Half Genie Hero was finished, the Shantae team was looking for where the series would go next. They thought, early on, that the next entry should go back to Metroid-like exploration. But Half Genie Hero's 3D World Engine wouldn't really make that feasible. So, they began working on a new 4K tile engine that would make the world building function more like in a traditional Metroid. Meanwhile, Apple Arcade showed interest in having the next Shantae game, whatever it would be, as a launch title for the platform. Trying to make the deadline for Apple Arcade's release date forced the team to work faster and more efficiently than usual. Matt Boson described the production of Seven Sirens as a little unusual for Shantae, in that, for the first time, there weren't many years apart between entries, and most of the same team who worked on Half Genie Hero also worked on Seven Sirens. One notable exception is series composer Jake Kaufman, who, for the first time, was not available and did not provide the soundtrack. Instead, Professor Sakamoto, a Japanese musician and chiptun composer, helmed the music for the project. Animated cutscenes were also added to the project, with Studio Trigger working on the opening animation, and KU, who also worked on the River City Girls opening animation, handling the in-game cutscenes. The development time for the project, which lasted for about two years, was greatly reduced when compared to Half Genie Hero's five years of development. This was thanks to the team being able to reuse a lot of the Tekken animations from the previous title. That said, a concession still had to be made to be able to make the deadline. The Apple Arcade version was actually split into two parts. The first part, released in late 2019, ended with a cliffhanger, while part 2, released in late March 2020, completed the adventure. The console and PC releases will not be split. There are some changes made to the gameplay systems in Seven Sirens. One such change is how transformations work. Now dubbed the Fusion Magic system, transformations function like the Pirate Gear system in Pirate's Curse. Instead of having to stop and dance for every transformation, you will now instantly transform when performing a simple command, such as by holding the attack button or by pressing a shoulder button. New transformations to Seven Sirens include the Dash Newt, which lets Shantae zip through the air and climb walls, the Bonker Tortoise, which lets her spin out of control and break through weak floors and enemies, and the Gastro Drill, with which Shantae can burrow through dirt and sand. While transformations won't require belly dancing, dances are still present in the game. They now work as lock and key mechanisms, used mainly to unlock or activate something, kind of like the Ocarina in Ocarina of Time or the X-Ray Beam in Super Metroid. These dances basically let Shantae borrow the powers of the other half genies. With these new powers, she'll be able to make progress by doing things like seeing invisible objects, activate electrical machinery, or healing people. The game will also bring back the presence of multiple towns and an overarching storyline. Another new exciting addition is the monster card system. These are random drops from enemies that can be equipped, three at a time, to modify something about Shantae. For example, they can modify your movement speed, increase the attack power of a specific move, nullify damage from certain types of obstacles, etc. You can even completely ignore this to give yourself a challenge. Now, let's talk about the characters confirmed to be in this game. As we saw earlier in the video, Shantae belly dances and uses transformation magic. When not using magic, she's also seen taking the role of a pirate, a ninja, a police officer a beach girl, and a tank. Now, some of these might or might not be canonical. She usually takes on a positive can-do attitude and tends to jump into action without hesitation. While she's often optimistic and sure of herself, her adventures do not always end in success. She often finds herself in situations that force her to make difficult selfless choices, sometimes sacrificing her chances to meet with her mother. That said, she's also far from perfect and can sometimes be pretty careless. She's actually been fired from her job as a guarding genie more than once 
and even had some run-ins with the law. She also might have even killed a dog at one point. Despite her fiery attitude and temper, she's actually quite a softie and goes out of her way to help others. She will even help out and run errands for villains when they're in heat. She cares for her friends and townspeople and has a bit of an abandonment complex that pushes her to try hard to fit in and be cool by doing things like using catchphrases or dressing up, sometimes at the dismay of those around her. In Seven Sirens, she's been invited to Paradise Island to participate in the Half Genie Festival, alongside the other Half Genies. During the performance, the other Half Genies get kidnapped, and Shantae sets out on an adventure to find them. While exploring the island, she runs into Risky Boots. Every great story must have a great villain, and Risky Boots is the perfect opposite to Shantae. While Shantae is depicted as young and cheerful, content with her small village life, Risky is always depicted as a power-hungry, ambitious woman. She proudly displays her very dead former master's skull by wearing it as a bustier. She's somewhat cursed. The extent of her curse isn't fully known, but it did give her a pale skin color and a certain weakness to being influenced by both her former master and dark magic. On the plus side, it also seems to let her command her vast legion of Tinkerbad minions, these guys, who fight and build machines for her. She actually knew Shantae's mother and has quite a bit of a mysterious past herself. Risky was also playable in a DLC episode released for Half Genie Hero. While her plans in Seven Sirens are, as usual, shrouded in mystery, she'll be a recurrent boss fight in dungeons, and is most likely up to no good. Uncle Mimic Mimic is Shantae's adoptive uncle. He was apparently close friends with Shantae's mother, back when she was in Sequin Land, and has raised Shantae after her disappearance. He seems to know more than he lets on, usually hiding things to protect his adoptive niece. He also happens to be a relic hunter, constantly unearthing items from the old world. Sky is Shantae's best friend. Her father is a relic hunter, just like Shantae's uncle Mimic, and both Sky and Shantae have been close friends since they were little kids. She's a bird trainer, and usually cool-headed and collected. She's also playable in a DLC episode for Half Genie Hero. In Seven Sirens, all she wants to do is to relax and enjoy a calm vacation while in Paradise Island. Another one of Shantae's close friends is Bolo. Bolo is not the sharpest tool in the shed. He's a fighter and a hero for hire, making his earnings by taking on random errands. He's the one who taught Shantae how to fight, and supposedly always looks for a chance to shine. But he's also usually left behind and isn't very reliable anyway, so we never get to see him do anything cool, outside of a DLC episode in Half Genie Hero where he's actually playable. His hope while in Paradise Island is to meet the local ladies. Roddy Tops is a zombie girl and a friend of Shantae. Sequin Land actually has two types of zombies. The first is the traditional flesh-eating kind, from popular media, which can be found roaming out in the wild. The second, which Roddy Tops and her two brothers are a part of, can mostly maintain control of their faculties. Do you know what stops them from mindlessly going out on a murderous rampage? <laughs> Drinking coffee! So, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, now you know the solution. While Roddy Tops really admires Shantae, the relationship is a little complicated as she's also kind of obsessed with the idea of eating Shantae's brains. She's kind of manipulative and always well informed. She's playable alongside Sky and Bolo in a DLC episode for Half Genie Hero. As for what she's doing in Seven Sirens, well, it's not too clear, but she might or might not be pretending to be a half genie who goes by the name of Fill in the Blank. Nope, not suspicious at all. Besides Fill in the Blank, Shantae gets to meet other half genies in Seven Sirens, each with their own abilities. Harmony is the eldest of the group and is actually the very first half genie, revealing that they haven't been around for more than a single generation. I don't know if the game will actually confirm this, but 
she might be related to one of the two genies that the Pirate Master mentioned in Pirate's Curse. He described one of them as a songbird, which would fit with the name that Harmony was given. Vera is native to Paradise Island, and she has Refresh Magic, which she can use to heal people and revitalize things. Plink is a seer, who can see the invisible world around her. Finally, Zapple can control electricity and likes to joke around. The game will also introduce the Seven Sirens, all of which seem to be based on different creatures from Greek mythology. Two of them have been publicly revealed by WayForward so far, including Water Lily Siren, a dryad who can control prickly plants around her. The second one revealed is Coral Siren, who uses machinery in battle and is apparently a cyclops, much like Ammo Baron and Branson in previous Shantae games. That leaves us with five more sirens, who can be seen in the box art. The game is currently available on Apple Arcade and releases on Windows, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One digitally on May 28th in North America and June 4th in European regions. There is also going to be a physical copy for the Switch and PlayStation 4 currently available for pre-order through Limited Run Games until June 14th. A special collector's edition will include a steelbook, reversible poster, a Game Boy cartridge shell, the original soundtrack, 50 monster trading cards and a special outer box. This one should release around August or September. Well, that's it for every major, hopefully non-spoiler thing known about Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Seeing that the game seems to put forth many of the very best elements in the Shantae series, I cannot help but be excited. Hope you enjoy going through the history of this franchise with me. So, what's your favorite game in the series? Are you excited to see what's in store for Shantae and her friends in the future? Please let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or reach me through the Gaming Capsule's Twitter account. As always, have a great day and see you next time!